Good morning, everybody. Starting to join. We'll get started here in just a couple of minutes. Let people get logged in and then we'll get rolling. Just as everybody's joining in, just so everybody knows, we'll give this another minute or two, and uh, then we'll go ahead and get started. Just want to give everybody a chance to get logged in. Before we get going, just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, everybody who is here viewing this, uh, this is uh, listening only. Um, myself and Mike Maxenny here will be uh, we'll doing all the talking. We are also recording this. Um, so as part of the follow-up email that you'll get from our team, uh, there'll be a link to the recording of the webinar. Feel free to share it. Uh, for those of you who have any very specific questions about your building as well, uh, we'll be also sending out a form. Uh, to fill out that um, you can tell us about your system and of course we can uh, answer any specific questions that you may have as part of the follow-up. Um, but we are uh, very excited to, to get going here. So um, a good amount of people on, Mike, and I'm sure there are people joining on, but um, this is quick introductions and then we'll get started. So my name is uh, Robert Vale. I'm Vice President of Sales here at Genia. Um, I will be doing the uh, Talking here in the beginning, we'll be walking through a brief PowerPoint, introducing everybody to our to our company as well as to our software solution. Um, and with me is Mike Maxenny, who's our director of uh, access control. Uh, so, Mike, maybe give a little bit of background on yourself. Uh, so you're new to the Genia audience, and uh, maybe t tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. So I am uh, one of the co-founders of um, Secure, which is now Genia Access Control. Uh, we, we joined Genia in December. Uh, my co-founder and I started that company in 2015. Um, so we've been in the access control industry for uh, five years now uh, with that product. Um, we have customers you know, all over the world in uh, 14 countries. Uh, all over the United States, about 32 states. So a um, lot of experience in access control. Really excited to, to talk to you guys about how we're automating uh, touchless access control for buildings and, uh, and enterprise tenants. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Mike. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we'll go through our PowerPoint. And we will go ahead and get started here. So once again, for those of you who are just joining in, and we got a lot of people popping in right now, um, this is uh, this is being recorded. Uh, everybody is on mute, uh, mute only. Um, and there is an option to submit questions. So if you're familiar with Zoom, Zoom and your navigation bar, there's a Q&A option. Feel free to submit questions uh, at the uh, towards the end. Mike and I will go through each of the questions individually. Uh, we'll answer them to the best of our ability. If for some reason, one of us doesn't know. Uh, we will get back to you with, a, with an appropriate response. So um, so with that, let's go ahead and get started. So, um, so we're going to walk through um, our, our cloud-based access control system today. So once again, my name is Robert Vale. I'm Vice President of Sales here at Genia. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with our company, uh, we are a, um, a technology company based out of Southern, Calif uh, Southern California, out of Irvine. Uh, our technology has been around for about the, uh, our cloud-based technology has been around for about the past eight years. So those of you who know Genia traditionally, um, you're familiar with our overtime HVAC service as well as our submeter reading and billing product. Uh, and then of course now with the acquisition of Mike's company, uh, we're now in the access control business. So uh, on our platform today, we have over 250 million square feet of office space using, using our products in some capacity. Um, we've, we're trusted by over 4,500 different companies. We have over 75,000 users uh, across the uh, across the country, um, and we have a 99% customer retention level. 
And this is at the building level. So as buildings change hands, property management companies change hands, uh, our company stays with the building year over year. Um, and part of the reason that we stay, uh, we stay with the buildings is because of, uh, because of our support level. Uh, Jania, you know, we have a white glove approach when it comes to customer service. Uh, for those of you who have worked with us over the years, you, you, you very much understand that. We provide 24-7 support uh, for all of our service. Uh, we have a net promoter score of over 75, since that puts us in the likes of, you know, of, of Apple and Nordstrom. Um, you know, one of the things we hear on a common basis is uh, Jania is a very responsive company. Um, and that's what we strive to do. Our goal here is to take care of you and ultimately take care of your tenants. Uh, you can see some of the, you know, just a sampling of some of the companies that we work with. Of uh, the uh, top 25 owners of commercial real estate in the United States, we work with 21 of them in some type of capacity. And that's of buildings of all shapes and size. We've got buildings as small as 17,000 square feet here in Orange County, and then as large as One World Trade Center in New York City, which is well over 3 million square feet. And we service everything in between. Um, that's office, that's industrial, that's retail, um, and in some instances, multifamily as well. Um, so what makes Ginia different than any other commercial real estate technology provider? So there's, there's just a few things. One is, uh, is we're hardware agnostic. Uh, so regardless of what service you have with us, whether it be overtime HVAC, submeter billing, or access control, our stuff, is, our solutions are designed to work with your existing systems. So for overtime HVAC, we can plug directly into your existing building automation system. proprietary hardware. Um, and why is that important? It means that we can leverage existing hardware that's in place um, at a site. So if anything is mercury based, and that controls about 60% of the hardware market, uh, or even HID, uh, we have official partnerships with both. And that gives a lot of flexibility to our customers. So instead of having to rip and replace and spend a a lot of capital to put in a new access control system, our goal is to leverage what you already have on site. So that's existing controllers, existing readers, existing wiring to make the lift to move to a much better solution uh, easier on you. Uh, that's a very, very big deal in the industry is we want to make sure we're non-proprietary so that you have a lot more flexibility. And then conversely, that gives you more freedom if for some reason um, you didn't like our service. Uh, you could cancel us and move to another software provider. I wouldn't, once again, you wouldn't have to rip and replace all the controllers and all the readers that you just put in. Uh, of course, we don't intend to lose anybody, but if that was, that, that was your course, we do make it much easier on you to be able to swap out providers. Uh, we do a lot of different integrations. So integrations mean a couple of things. One is we have official partnerships uh, with both Angus and Building Engines. So on any ten of tenant billing side, we can provide data uh, that can be streamlined so that you're not doing data entry to get billables back into the work order system and ultimately into your accounting software. On the access control side, we have a slew of integrations with, uh, with camera integrators so like Cisco Meraki, uh, our Tyco Cloud, as well as uh, identity management systems such as uh, Windows Active Directory, uh, Azure, Okta, uh, to try and make the provisioning and, and deprovisioning of users much more streamlined and, and accurate. Um, we don't charge any setup fees for any of our software. So any of our software solutions, uh, and for those of you who've worked with the studios, you understand this, is our goal is to not charge any setup fees for any of the software. Uh, what we always charge is a fixed monthly fee, uh, and we ask for a 12-month commitment. If at the end of the 12 months you are not happy with our service, you can get rid of us. Um, like I said, that doesn't, we don't intend for that to happen. On the access control side, sometimes there is a bit of lift. So depending on what you currently have on site, we'll determine if we need to put in new readers or controllers or not. Um, so sometimes you have old legacy systems that need to be swapped out. Um, so we might have to make, you know, make some changes as, as appropriate, but we can always discover that during the site walk process. Uh, and then of course our ongoing support. So Jania is uh, notorious for 24 seven support. And like I said, a white glove approach to service. So our team is here to support all of you uh, and more importantly, your tenant, your tenant customers as well. So three main solutions, overtime HVAC, submitter billing, and access control. Uh, today, we're going to focus exclusively on our access control system and talk about the touchless environment uh, for buildings. So when we go into building access control, um, so the way that most access control systems work, and you know, a lot of you here on this call are going to be very familiar with this, is there's a server down in the basement that controls um, all the access to the building. 
And that involves um, connections to cameras, um, card readers, and controllers, and it's this old database that's probably never updated. And in order to add somebody to the system, um, there's, a, there's a lot of processes that have to happen, meaning a tenant fills out a form or it goes into a work order, then somebody in the building team gets their weight HID card, you got to go downstairs, program it into a server, um, and then a couple days later, you get the card back up to the tenant. And there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of issues when it comes to that. One is when it's on-prem, um, a lot of those servers are not well-maintained in terms of uh, software updates uh, and just general cleanliness of the database. If buildings have changed hands multiple times uh, or property management companies have changed, there's probably a generic username and password that's probably on a sticky note there next to the, on the monitor. Uh, so there's no security. You know, anybody can come in, they can make changes, there's no audit trail. And that's a problem when you look at an individual building. But when you expand to a portfolio, your problems grow exponentially because now you've got different systems in different buildings that you don't know how to use. You have to try and get trained on different software, and there's different levels of maintenance, maintenance that have been done at each individual building. And so as you try and manage all this, uh, it becomes an issue. We've seen property managers who have five different key cards for their five different buildings. I was just talking to, uh, to somebody else who has three different key cards for just for their building. The tenants have a parking key card, they have their own suite key card, and then they have a building key card. And that's just, that's just too much to manage and it's an inconvenience uh, for everybody. Um, and you know, when you try and even roll out you know, mobile to go more touchless, you know, these old legacy systems really just don't support that. So, you know, so in just, you know, talking about some of the other challenges, you know, there's a lot of manual processes. Manual processes mean wasted time. Uh, if you're trying to service a tenant, trying to service them immediately, they want things now and they want to be able to get into the system, especially as you have new tenants moving into a building. Uh, there's not a lot of process for uh, the removal of users. And I'll give you a real life example. At our building uh, in Southern California, when we rolled out our system to the building, uh, the, the database that was downloaded, there were over 4,500 active users. Well, there's only 1,200 people who work in the building. Um, and you know, part of the reason for that is the tenants have no onus to tell the property teams when they've let somebody go. And so people you get removed from the tenant space, but oftentimes not from the base building. And unless you're doing an audit on a quarterly or a monthly basis with your tenants to keep the data clean, you can have old static data, which then becomes a potential security risk um, for, for the building itself, because you've got people who shouldn't be in the building with, that, with the ability um, to still get in there uh, technically. Also, mobile deployment is, it can be very much a challenge if you don't have a system that's integrated to be able to support mobile, not only just the using your phone to hit a reader, but also the provisioning of keys. Uh, if you want to make it very simple so that you can give somebody the ability to use mobile. And that's, that's a challenge with some older systems. And it's, just, it's a tenant experience, right? Tenants want the ability to be, to, to be flexible. They want to be able to use their phone, especially in today's current environment. You know, building teams have a responsibility to try and make things much more streamlined and, of course, much more touchless. So as much as you can use your phone to uh, automate some processes as well as give a more touchless experience, um, that, that improves uh, the overall uh, expectations of your tenants dramatically. So our solution takes everything that you're accustomed to in an enterprise access control system and we just move it to the cloud. And there's huge benefits by moving to the cloud. One is uh, your, your data is much more secure. It's the software is constantly being up to date, so you don't have to worry about it having an old server crashing. Everything is backed up and it's all secure in the cloud. It also allows us to be much more flexible in terms of what we do. So we can have um, a lot of integrations. Um, so obviously we can integrate with video. We can integrate with different visitor management systems. So depending on what you use at the building, we can do integrations. We can make the provisioning, deprovisioning process much easier. And then we give you the ability to manage uh, your access control system from anywhere. So you don't have to be on site, especially when nobody's on site these days. You don't have to go into a server. You don't have to try and log into something that's not there anymore. You can do this all remotely. And not only from your laptop and logging into the portal, but even from your phone. So I can pull up my phone now and I can manage all my users and manage the database and have full visibility into what is happening in the access control system at the building level. I know if there's door held open events, I know if um, you know, users are being added, if users are being removed, I can go do that myself if I'm not at the site right now. And we know a lot of building teams are working uh, different types of schedules, skeleton schedules. So anytime you need to go through and make those changes, you have the flexibility to do that from anywhere. 
And of course, it supports everything touchless. There should be no more paper trail to try and get somebody in. You shouldn't have to assign a physical key card where somebody has to walk down to another person's office um, and provide a piece of paper that somebody's signing, taking to another database, managing that, you know, typing everything on a different key cord, and then giving somebody else a card. You should be able to do this all um, from anywhere uh, and make it much easier experience for everybody. In addition to that, our, our solution also provides a self-service tenant portal. So we wanted to give the tenants the ability to manage their own database to take that onus away from property teams so that you shouldn't be the one responsible for trying to keep the tenant data clean. The tenants should be responsible for that. So every single tenant uh, with our system has the ability to log in. They can go ahead and make a request to add a user to the base building system. And that gives them you know, access, depending on what the tenant is, has access to, right? Is, the, um, is it the front door of the lobby, the parking deck, um, elevators as well? Um, and that's all they're gonna be able to get to. And the property team has the ability to go ahead and review and approve that. But it really puts that onus on the tenants to add their users, remove their users, and keep the data clean. In addition to that, we can do a lot of different integrations with their identity management systems. So if they're, once again, if they're using Azure or Active Directory, we can actually do an API integration with that so that it allows it to streamline the process and automate the provisioning, and more importantly, the deprovisioning of users from the system. And so, once again, you're, you're not giving up control. Uh, you have the ability to delegate to the tenants so that they're the ones managing their database. You have full visibility to anybody that's added to the system. Uh, you can deny any event. You can put in little chats and ask notes, uh, ask questions about the users that are being added. But you have this full visibility to every single user that's in the system. So it's no longer um, assigning a random key card or just giving it to somebody else. Uh, everything is matched up to a person. They can even upload pictures of people within the system. So you know exactly who's in the system and you have full control of that as well. Uh, our system is also designed to be very flexible in meaning supporting all different types of credentials. So we work with all your existing key cards. So when your tenants um, move into the system and they have their, uh, their specific key card that's designed for their company, uh, we'll fully support that and we'll put that in the system. We support fobs, we support clickers, and of course we support new, meaning mobile access to be able to use your iPhone or your Android phone to access the building uh, or even your, uh, your Apple Watch. Uh, we fully support all the different forms of credentialing, all different forms of key, uh, of, of key cards to make it much more flexible for all of your users. So once again, we had a client, um, when they installed the system, it got installed over the weekend, so everybody went home on a Friday, used their, their white key card to get out of the building. When they came back on Monday, they used the same card to get in the building. They didn't even know there was a different system put in place. The property team knew because they're the ones who are actually going through and managing the database. So they saw there was a much different experience. Um, but from a, from a tenant side, they didn't know until we decided to roll out mobile experience to them and do trainings and do the onboarding as well. And I'll talk a little bit about that in, in a second. Um, our mobile access um, was designed to be uh, much easier to manage. Um, so we actually have an official partnership with HID. So what we did is we took the HID uh, software development kit and we built our app around that. So our app is it's a native app, but we took all the functionality that HID had and then we improved upon it. And then we made it a much easier process. For those of you who've ever tried to use the HID mobile portal, that can be a painful process. It's another database to manage. We streamlined everything. So the provisioning of physical key cards as well as digital key cards is all done from the same portal. Um, and so it's one click provisioning. I can really simply add somebody to the system. They'll send an email, they download the app and they're ready to go. You also don't have to pay per key. Our subscription for the base building includes all the digital keys. So you're not, you're not being charged multiple times for the same key. Everything is being handled within one database. Uh, we can provide single sign-on. And a phone is much more secure than, than a than a HID card or any type of key card. You know, a little, little thing you can do is you can buy a device on eBay for 25 bucks, which allow you to copy that card and share that card when you want. As opposed to your phone, your phone is super secure. Are you, you know, most people are not even willing to share their phone with anybody else, let alone let them swipe right after you, after you show them a picture. And the phone also uh, locks the credential to the phone. So for some reason, Mike were to get my username and password, uh, he could not walk in and use my credential because it's matched up to the phone. 
if I lose my phone, like, you know, a lot of people do, uh, I can just have a new credential assigned within a matter of minutes, and that's set up to go to my new phone, and it's really easy to transfer that. Uh, but we do want to make it as simple as possible and very convenient to do things from the phone. The phone uh, app, just so everybody understands, does work in, uh, it, it works in the background, so you don't have, even have to unlock your phone. You don't have to open your phone or open the app in order to use the mobile experience. Uh, and I'll show you how that looks here in just a brief video. So I'll give you an example of the mobile experience. So when I come in, I can use a couple different ways. I can do what we call tap to open, where I can tap a reader, just like I'm accustomed to with a normal key card, or that I can use what we call twist and go. So as I'm walking up to, uh, to a reader or driving into the parking deck, I can twist my phone and unlock it, or I can use my Apple Watch. So if my phone is in my pocket, I can use the watch uh, to go ahead and unlock the door. So three different options is a way to use your phone from a, from a tenant experience. Uh, it makes it very, very convenient to go through the system. Once again, the phone works in the background, um, so I don't have to uh, open it up. I don't have to do anything like that. Um, the only requirement I have is there's location services that have to be on just so it wakes the phone up in the background. Um, but it's much more convenient, much more user-friendly, um, and it works that way. Uh, in terms of the technology partner front, um, like I mentioned, we have official partnerships with both HID and Mercury. And the reason for that is it's about 60% of the overall firmware that's um, in most access control systems uh, in, the, in the industry. Uh, it's also non-proprietary uh, and gives our customers a lot more flexibility to switch out software providers. On the reader side, we have uh, partnerships with HID and we support proxy as well. So if you're going to you know, pick a different specific reader, uh, we can work with those existing readers that you already have in place. In terms of what we can take over, these systems are existing Mercury-based systems. So if you have any of these systems uh, in your building now, whether it be Phoenix or Honeywell or Linnell or Avigilon, uh, they're all Mercury-based. Uh, so we can make the lift to move to a better software solution much easier. Uh, because we can actually redirect uh, IP addresses to our cloud. We can leverage existing controllers, existing readers um, most of the time in the sites to make the move to uh, a much improved access control system uh, very, very simple and streamlined. Um, but those are systems that we can take over. And then we do a lot of different integrations. So in terms of the provisioning side, uh, whether you're using G Suite or Azure or Okta or OneLogin, um, we fully support API integrations, which take a matter of minutes to set up. And during the live demo, Mike will walk you through that. Um, and we make it very easy for those users to go ahead and it makes it streamlined for the provisioning and deprovisioning of users. We support single sign-on. We also provide integrations with uh, both Cisco, Cisco Meraki as well as uh, Tyco Cloud. Uh, and what that does, that syncs up the video management system with um, the access control system. Uh, so if I log in and I need to know exactly when somebody came in and I can see from the access log at the 8.03 a.m., uh, with a click of a button, I can be synced up to that part of the video management system and I can see the event happening. And then, of course, in the notification side, we can integrate with both uh, Microsoft Teams as well as Slack. So if there's a do door held open event, we can essentially ping you and send you a message uh, making you aware of this uh, and allows you to go in and, and fix any issues that may have on site. Uh, some of the other big benefits. One is, like I, to, to the point earlier made, uh, we want to minimize the implementation costs. So by being non-proprietary and working with existing Mercury-based systems and HID systems, uh, it makes the lift to move to a much different solution, uh, much more manageable for a building team, so you're not ripping and replacing everything, uh, leveraging that existing hardware. Um, by moving to a mobile experience and a cloud-based experience, it makes it much more convenient for everybody. So not only does the tenant have the convenience of using an app now to enter and exit the building, um, but on the overall experience of managing a database, there's no more paper trail. Uh, everything is done online from anywhere. So now property teams are no longer trying to track down wet signatures. So not trying to track down a physical piece of paper. Everything is done online. So you have the ability to manage the database, uh, remove users, add users, give, give different levels of access group and security roles. Uh, and then on the tenant side, they once again have the ability to go and manage their own users as well. So it gives a much enhanced tenant experience because uh, you know, in, in, in collectively in everybody's experience here, how many times have you ever had tenants that have actually been trained on how to use the access control system? It's probably never. Um, because, you know, they just come into the building, they get the card, and they use it. Well, now, you know, our job is to give your tenants a much better experience. We're going to train them on how to go about 
adding their own users to the system and provisioning keys uh, and give it a much better experience in terms of technology at the building. And then we're going to automate the user provisioning and deprovisioning to make it much more simpler for everybody uh, to, to clean, keep a clean database. Uh, the deployment process. Um, we want to make this as easy as possible for everybody. So the first thing we do is we have a kickoff call. We introduce our team to the building team. Uh, we create an instance. We create all the tenant portals as well. Um, we set up the user database and then we deploy the integrations, meaning if we need to swap out controllers or readers, we get those all uh, pre-formatted and we get them shipped to the building um, and everything is configured. So we work with the local integrators to get everything installed on site. Uh, this is not something that we do directly. We're the software manufacturer, we're the service provider on the software, um, but we work with partner integrators all across the country, actually, in fact, all across the world uh, to get the service installed. So a lot of times it's people that you've already worked with who are going to come on site, uh, install readers, install controllers, fix any door locks. Uh, we partner with them so that they can come on site. Um, and then we do training. So we're going to train, obviously, the property team on how to use the system, and we're going to train all your tenants on how to use everything as well. Um, and after that, we go live. Throughout the course of the year, as you bring in new tenants to the building, uh, we will set the tenants up for you. We will train those tenants for you, and we provide ongoing support. And our support uh, is, like I mentioned, is 24-7. So if somebody's in the system and for some reason they don't know why their phone isn't working, there's a live chat that they can talk to somebody. If somebody needs a password reset, we'll help them reset their password. Um, if something's physically wrong at the building, a uh, door, a lock is broken, a door is jammed, we'll work with the building team and we'll project manage, bringing the integrator on site to get it fixed and get it tested to make sure everything is functioning as it should. So it's a full service uh, proposition to be able to help you manage all of your security, uh, your physical security at the building and provide that ongoing support. Um, now, before we go into the live demo and I pass it over to Mike, I'm going to do one quick thing. Um, we're going to give you a brief, brief preview of some product enhancements that we are making here in the next couple of months, uh, and then we'll actually go into the live demo. So, Mike, I'm going to ask you to talk about our brand new visitor management system. Great. Thanks, Rob. My uh, fingers are getting a little worked on the Q&A section, so keep asking away. I'm happy to answer those as we go along. Um, so as, as Rob teed up for us nicely, uh, our whole goal with our access control product is to provide a one-stop solution to help properties simplify and automate security management. So, and when I, and I say security management on purpose. So security management encapsulates not just access control, but visitor management is becoming an ever more increasing part of that picture along with video. Um, so as Rob touched on, we have a few video integrations built into the platform natively. Um, we're adding two more um, shortly as well. So uh, in the next few weeks, you'll see an announcement from us talking about our new Eagle Eye camera integration and our milestone camera integration. Uh, we're really excited to launch those. Um, but as the world has changed drastically over the last few months, um, we had a, a strong demand to enhance our visitor management product and change how it works. So we launched our original version of our visitor management product uh, just over a year ago. And that was all kiosk based. Um, obviously, in today's touchless environment, we, we needed to provide a touchless visitor experience um, so that as properties get ready to welcome back their tenants, that you not only are you allowing tenants to come into the building with a touchless access experience, but also guests. Um, and a key component of that is guest pre-registration. Um, as you're opening the buildings, it's really important to not have a backlog of visitors in the lobby. We wanted to increase throughput while increasing security and safety at the same time. Um, so how do we do that, right? Uh, one is our guest pre-registration and QR code system. So inside of our guest pre-registration system, the tenant just submits a new, uh, a new guest for uh, who's going to come visit them. In there is a name, email address, and a time frame. Once that information is input, the guests will then receive a, an email uh, that, they, that has a web page that they fill out a form on. And that form is a customized form that's built during the implementation process with our customer. So, so with the building team, we sit down and we go, what questions do you want every 
tenant or every guest to answer. Um, do you want to have a, a, a coronavirus or COVID-19 question in there saying, have you exhibited any symptoms of illness in the last 14 days? Yes or no. If yes, then kick them out of the, the process. But if they say no and they have not, then we'll go ahead and complete the pre-registration process. Once the pre-registration process is completed, the guest then receives a QR code. And that QR code can be used in a number of different applications. So the simplest version of the QR code is just a check-in system. So you have a QR code reader or an iPad at the security desk or the front door. They simply set, uh, scan that QR code on the check-in. It'll notify the person that they're visiting that they've arrived, check that guest in, and now you have a record. But we want to take it a step further and obviously leverage those QR codes as a physical access credential. Um, so if you have turnstiles or, uh, or elevators that leverage access control, we install a QR code reader in those two situations and then the guests can simply badge in, it'll let them up, and you can make those QR codes time sensitive or use sensitive. So if I scan it in once, it's then deactivated or it'll be active for a certain amount of time, let's say an hour or two hours, just to give, allow me to get in and out of the building as a guest. Um, as, and then after that time frame, the QR code is then deactivated. Um, so that's the basic tenet of, the, of our new uh, visitor management solution. It's all pre-registration and QR code based. Um, now tenants can interact with this in one of two ways. One is in the mobile app. Um, so that plus button there, down there in the bottom right hand corner in the visitor section is where you register a new guest or you can do this in the web app. Um, so it allows you, depending on where you are, if you're on the go or if you're sitting at your desk to quickly and easily add a new guest. Again, so once, once that new guest is added, then they're sent a pre-registration form via email. Um, that form is then hosted in, uh, in a web page, um, in, not in the first release, but in the release subsequent to that, we're gonna be actually enabling you to print QR codes and put on a, a pedestal or a stand at the front your lobby entrance. So that if you have guests that are not pre-registered, they can simply walk up, scan the QR code, and it'll pull up that uh, registration form as well. So we're really excited about this uh, dynamic system. Now, inside of that form, you'll have a couple couple things. One is it's completely customizable. You can do it and you can customize it right in the UI. You don't need our software engineers or our support team to create or uh, enhance any questionnaires for you. It's, it's self-service, but of course, with our 24-7 support team, if you need any help, we're always available. Um, this really allows you to have a unified guest registration process for all the tenants. Um, rather than having some buildings with multiple iPads at the front desk, depending on who your tenants are in the building, this allows you to streamline and have a multi-tenant guest management system uh, right out of the bat. That's just part of our building sync system. Um, now, of course, you'll be able to create a COVID-19 questionnaire with a denial process. Uh, those dynamic questionnaires are, are an existing feature set that is already in our, um, our visitor management system. We're just changing that to be part of the pre-registration process. And of course, there's the turnstile elevator integration with that as well. Um, so the key here is that our, 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 and this is the same for most of our product ethos, is to keep things simple while providing a, a comprehensive solution. Now it is not, you know, I'll freely admit this is not the most advanced visitor management solution that's on the market, but we think it covers the, the core requirement for our building customers, which is to provide a touchless access experience that's easy to deploy and it's not gonna break your budget. Um, it's actually a lot less expensive than most visitor management systems out there today that are much more advanced. Um, so we think we've found that right balance of features, usability, and price. Cool. cool. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for the preview. Appreciate that. I'm going to go ahead and I'll stop sharing and give you some, give you control. Great. Or you should be able to, there you go. Yep. I got it. Cool. All right. So now. I'm going to show off our access control solution. Let me get that out of there. So what we're gonna do is go through the core platform um, uh, and look at it from three different perspectives. One is the property teams dashboard. So what do you see when you log in as a property manager? What do you see as a tenant? 
And then what does the mobile experience look like? So starting off with the building experience, <clears throat> when you log in, this is your dashboard. You have uh, a quick dashboard that's Mike, going to show. Yeah, Mike, we're not showing the dashboard. Oops. Sorry. Is that, is that working now? Yeah. Great. So right when you log in as the property team, um, you're going to see an analytics dashboard. It's going to show you today's attendance and it's going to show you your attendance graph over time. Um, just some lightweight analytics that uh, you'll have right off, off the bat. Now, I'm not going to bore everyone with the nitty gritty details. The, the key thing to keep in mind here is that this is a full fledged enterprise access control system. What I'm going to focus on here is what's different about our access control system. So starting off with the, the database schema of our system, we wanted to provide a really logical way of showing you who's in the system. So first things first is we need to segment all, all your users by tenant, not just dump them all into the same bucket. So right when you log in, you'll see all the tenants in the building. Now if we select a tenant, you'll be able to see a few different things inside the tenant profile. One is you'll be able to see which access, um, uh, which access groups that we've given them. So when we're going through the setup process, we basically create an access group for each tenant, and then you select how many allocations of that access group a tenant can have. So let's say as part of our lease in this building, we have access to 10 parking spaces. So what I can do is set a limitation on how many users I can add with the parking access. Um, so just to do that, you'll see right here, total users and then the max allocation setting. In the max allocation, you can set that right here. Oops. Um, so why is that not working? Uh, but basically, <laughs> sorry. I, I, I forgot about that technical difficulty there. Uh, but basically what you see here is that you can designate in a specific access group how many people can have that level of access. Then we have the user database. So what, what oftentimes happens is a property team needs to see exactly which users belong to which tenant. That's shown right here in the user database. And then you can quickly and easily pull reports on a tenant by tenant basis by having all their activity by tenant segmented into the tenant profile. So again, this is about cleaning up the data and giving it to you in a presentable format. <clears throat> so that's the tenant database. Now, what we also wanted to do was provide a sub admin role that allows you to delegate different functions of controlling security and access for the building without giving up access to unnecessary features. So if you want someone from the security team to be able to view the logs and remotely lock or unlock a door when they get a call, all you have to do is add them as a security user right here. They'll be able to see the logs, add or remove users, and, um, and then remotely unlock the doors, but they can't change access groups. They can't change the elevator settings. They can't do any of the advanced functions inside the system. So this just allows you to delegate again control or delegate access and work inside the system without giving up unnecessary control. Now, the next thing, and this is really one of the key features of our product, and that is building sync. So building sync is that system of allowing your tenants to add and remove their own users from the system. So it works in a, in a request based process. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a user in as a tenant and then go through and approve that user as the property team. So we switch over to the tenant portal here. I'm going to go ahead and add a new user. Test user. Test at get junior. I'm going to select the access group here. And then I'm going to select the access here and hit save. And then I'm going to assign a new key card for this user and hit save. So now we've added in our test user. We've given them a key card. What I'm going to see on the property side is an open request. So if we go to open pending requests, here is that new test user from Jania. So Jania wants to add in test user who from the tenant added this person in. All I have to do is the property team is go 
approve. And now that user and that key card is active at the base building level. It's that simple. No more grabbing key cards out of a box, typing in numbers, wondering if the card format's activated. All of that is, is delegated and, taking, and taken off of your team's plate. <clears throat> So moving on to some of our other features, a lot of things, or a lot of the time, uh, property teams struggle with creating reports. So we made reporting extremely simple. Um, all you have to do is come into the activity log. The reports are broken out into, or, or the activity log is broken into three sections. One is the access log, so this shows you who's badging in or any sort of access, uh, access control level uh, information. Then we have our audit logs. So an audit log is basically any administrative action taken within the system. Who's adding and removing users? Who's changing settings? That kind of stuff. So you're never wondering how something changed or what was changed. It's all right here in your audit log. And then of course, if you have our visitor management system, the visitor logs will be in here as well. So to create a custom report, we have a lot of different parameters that you can use. I can search by tenant. I can search by door. So let's say, say we want to give a report for how many people accessed the gym last month. I'm going to select the gym door and then I'm going to find a date parameter here. I input the dates and hit apply. And now we're going to see all that access data. I can quickly and easily export that to a CSV and I can further refine it down again if I want to add get more parameters or change the date. Um, but it's that easy to build a report. <clears throat> Another thing that we wanted to do was delegate who's getting which notifications in the system. Because the property team is segmented usually into you know, three parts. You have the property managers, you have the engineers, and you have security. Each one of those functions is there for a reason. Property managers are there to service the tenants. The engineers are there to make sure that the, the building is, is working properly and security is to make sure that the building is secure. So if you have a controller on site and it it somehow the network connection goes down that needs to go to engineering and then that, and then we'll work with the engineers to restore the internet connection so all you have to do to make sure that that happens and goes to the right person is select here notify when the controller goes offline and then we would just put in an email address here and now that person or that group of people depending on the email group is going to get those notifications but it won't send it to the property manager. It's not gonna send it to security because they don't need to get that. Only the engineers need to know when a controller is online or offline. Now, you're gonna to wanna to know, you're gonna to wanna to send an alerts to the security team if someone's trying to badge into a door they don't have access to, or if someone is using a key card that was terminated in the system. So all those events can be again, delegated and segmented right here in the alert center. Moving on to the control center. So right here in the control center, this is your remote for the building. This allows you to see the status of your doors, whether they're locked or unlocked. But more importantly, it gives you the ability to remotely lock and unlock them right here. So as you can see, I can simply hit lock or unlock, or I can hit quick grant. So if I get a call from uh, a vendor or someone who needs access just for a couple seconds to a single door, all I have to do is go in here and hit quick grant and it'll unlock the door for five seconds and lock it back again. So we're moving towards the end of the actual walkthrough of the product. There's only a few more things I'm gonna show you. Um, right here in the access control system, this is where we de delegate who has access to what doors at what times. Um, you can create access groups for each tenant individually or you can group all your tenants together into one. You can stack multiple access groups into a user profile. Um, so it's a really flexible system um, and we help you set this all up at the beginning. In fact, when we're doing a, a system takeover, we're basically taking your existing logical setup of the system, migrating that over with your users and keys, and then replicating that in our system. So the setup process is mostly done by our team, but if you needed to make changes, it's right here in the dashboard. We also have full, full elevator controls, whether it's a relay-based elevator or destination dispatch integrated elevator. Um, Last couple of things I'm going to show off here are our support functions and our integrations. So in the integrations tab, you'll be able to see all the integrations you have access to 
Uh, we have both Slack and Teams if you're using those platforms for internal comms. Um, this is a, a great way to get notifications and alerts instantaneously uh, while sparing your inbox. Um, camera integrations are set up right here. So all that's done right in the integrations tab. And last but not least is our support. So inside of the support channel, you'll have instant access to a, 20, a team that's available 24 seven. Our team is based in Irvine, California and Atlanta, Georgia, um, and we're available around the clock. So if you have any questions or issues, you can just open up a live chat right here. When we were starting our access control product back in 2015, the number one complaint outside of the software that we kept hearing was how hard it was to get support for their systems. So we made it part of our mission from day one to provide best in class white glove support for all of our customers. Now, <clears throat> what you're probably wondering is what about my tenants? Well, again, this is available to them via the mobile app right here. Um, they, they can, if they have any questions or issues about how to use mobile, uh, or any functions inside a building sync, how to add or remove users, get those integrations set up, our team is available. So with that said, Rob, did I miss anything? I don't believe so, Mike. I think we've covered everything. Once again, everything that uh, Mike did here in the portal is available in the app. Um, once again, we provide 24 seven support and service, uh, for anybody, you know, who needs help, we can actually walk you through that. Uh, Mike, there's a couple questions that came through as well. So why don't we just, uh, address those real quick. Um, so one of the questions sure. that just came in is from, um, from a gentleman named Oleg is, do you maintain dedicated databases per client per building or one database for all clients? Yeah. So each building has its own database and then we logically segment that database by tenant. So when the tenant goes into their portal, they're just seeing a version of that database that includes all of their data, their users. Um, so they can pull their own reports, add or remove their own users. Um, but it's just it, at its core the, the logic, it, it's a logical separation rather than a, a full segmentation of a new database. Okay, thank you. Um, and then how secure the databases? Do we use any type of encryption for user data? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we use 256 bit encryption when the data is at rest. It's the same, uh, same encryption scheme, uh, as, as banks use for financial data. Um, so very secure. Uh, we also, uh, do two times a year. We pay third party companies to try and hack our system and tell us if there's any vulnerabilities. So we're constantly securities at the top of, uh, of our uh, product team's focus. Uh, we have a lot of enterprise customers that do financial services and, and banking services. Um, so this is just part of our requirement for servicing those customers. Uh, next question, with tenants having uh, control to add cards, uh, would we still need to supply cards to the tenants? And you know, is essentially this all digital? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so of course, in a building, you're not going to have 100% uh, of people use mobile. Um, and that's one of the beauties of our of our system. Because we use non proprietary hardware, you can keep using all of your existing key cards and then roll out mobile to the tenants that want it when they want it. Um, so in terms of how you get them cards, you can keep doing it the way you're doing it today, where you provide cards to them, they pay you. Um, or if you want, we can handle that directly with the tenant. It's really up to how the property team wants to manage that. Um, you guys just tell us what you want to do. Um, and then the next question there, how is pricing determined? Uh, pricing is just determined on a, a per square footage basis of the building. Yeah, um, and pricing, just so everybody understands, is encompassing a couple things. So pricing is obviously on the software side, the subscription side, and to Mike's point, that's based on square footage. Uh, any hardware that's required to swap out, if you have an older proprietary system or something that for some reason needs to be updated, um, what we do is we do a site walk with the local integrator to determine what the cost would be to replace physical equipment. And that could be uh, readers, controllers, and the installation costs but we'll go ahead and scope out the entire project for you. So that you know, if you wanna make a change, here's everything that's gonna to take to move to a cloud-based system like ours. Um, and, but you have a full, you know, full picture in front of you of exactly what the costs are gonna be. So, um, and with that, I believe, oh, hold on one second, Mike. Uh, we've got another question about uh, video integration, how cameras are monitored and viewed. Mm -hmm. So Karen, I'd like to yeah. see an example. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so Karen, once the video management system is integrated, you'll see inside of the activity log that there is a link to camera right here. So we can see here in the activity log, Jake came into the front door. All I have to do is hit the HQ main entrance camera link here. It's gonna take us over into our VMS platform. All I have to do is log in. Now, once we get into our VMS system, it's gonna take us to that event at that timestamp, minus five seconds. There we go. And there's Jake going into our office. The idea here is, again, to link the events in your system to actionable video, not force you to, to say, hey, there's an event, now I have to go over the VMS and scroll through and find that video at that specific timestamp. You're just gonna get a link to show the video. Cool. Um, thank you, Mike. And then we have another question about uh, having a visitor going from one building to another. So, because um, you get to, say you get to a campus, right? You've got a four building campus and you know a visitor who comes in they need to go to a couple different buildings um will the the visitor management system qr code work for multiple buildings or is it set to one specific building matches up to the specific access uh access control system yeah it's it's per building um so it, even if you have let's say you have two buildings within the same ownership group portfolio you'd have to get a different you have to get registered for each one. That, that QR code is not going to work between systems. Okay, cool. And as it probably should be. So, um, wonderful. And I think, you know, you answered other questions that were already online earlier. Um, with that, I want to once again thank everybody for your time and for being part of this. Um, I hope this was helpful for everybody. Uh, we will, like I said, we are recording this. We will send out an email uh, afterwards with a link to the recording as well as a link to the uh, the sitewalk questionnaire. So if for those of you who are interested in taking a look at this for your building and doing a full scope to see what it would take to move to the system, um, we can go ahead and arrange that uh, directly with you. So, um, and I believe that is everything. So once again, thank you so much for your time and uh, have a wonderful day. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Thanks everyone.